ओम नम श्रियतिराजाय विवेकानंदसूर सच्चिसुखस्वूपाय स्वामीने तापहारिणे जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गुरु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्म मे हम्बल सल्यूटेशन द फीट ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण देव होली मदर श्री शारदा देवी एंड स्वामी विवेकानंद मई नमस्कार एंड बेस्ट विशेष टू स्वामी ईशात मनन जी आई एम थैंकफुल टू ईशात मनन जी फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ मीटिंग यू ऑल दिस इवनिंग एक्चुअली आई हैड कम फॉर एन अदर प्रोग्राम एंड देन लेटर ऑन दिस लेक्चर्स वेंट ऑन गेटिंग एडेड एंड सो आई एम हियर फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव डेज विद इन दैट आई हैव टू डिलीवर ट्वेंटी लेक्चर्स and i have to i have to manage within that time because 31st i must go back because third i have to again go to belumot calcutta for our heads conference so that is the time so all the lectures have to be included in that so i am very happy that uh, as a fringe benefit in bengali they say fau i am getting this opportunity of meeting you all so the subject as you know is swami vivekanand in gujarat <clears throat> so swami vivekanand in gujarat as you know swami vivekanand came to america in 1893 to participate in the world's parliament of religion chicago and 11 september he delivered his historic speech that was also 9/11 and because we did not listen to his message there was another 911 after 180 years so swami ji had come for the world's parliament region because of that he came to here and then he was so popular that he had to stay back here for three and a half years in 1897 he returned to india but before coming to america he had traveled all over the country of that the maximum part he spent was in gujarat and about 8 months that he spent there many things that happened so i will try to show uh, uh, there are certain stories also if time permits i will show the, i will tell about the stories also so swami vivekan you all of you know that he took the blessings of holy mother sharda devi in the month of july 1890 and went for a tour of india first he went to banaras kashi from there on to delhi and to himalayas almora and all that and then from there the 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 disciples their disciples other brother disciples met him in uh, meerut and then he said that no i want to go alone nobody should follow me then he came to rajasthan and then alwar then he went to mount abu and there he met khetri maharaja so he was in khetri for some time long time and from khetri he went to Aj- jaipur ajmer from ajmer he took a train to ahmedabad so his first destination was in ahmedabad so first when he came to ahmedabad there is an interesting thing happened he was sitting under a tree near the railway station it was a small railway station at that time now it's a very big railway station so he was sitting under a tree and one person he came by another train and when uh, the, he was the sub judge of ahmedabad lal shankar meshagutrawadi so when he came he saw this at the time swami ji was only 27 years young but very bright eyes and very wonder, wonderful look so he just asked where do you stay and i said where a monk stays upstairs is the sky and down below is the earth there i am staying so he said why don't you come with me and stay with me i don't mind <laughs> so swami vivekan got free lodging and boarding he had no money you know as a parivraja ka all the brother disciples and swami vivekan they took a vow they will not touch money they will not have any money if somebody gives the railway ticket they will take railway ticket otherwise go by walking and no no other and 
not touching money. So Swamiji got free lodging and boarding. So that is how Swami, he took that Lal Shankar Umayasak Travadi, took him to his house. Uh, that was a very good house, palatial building, but it was in a crowded place. So Swamiji was little uncomfortable with the noise. He said, then, okay, I'll take you another house near Sabarmati River. It's near the, in the forest. That time it was forest. Now it is the heart of the city. Now, now the uh, town hall is there. Just below, behind, the, behind the town hall is that building where Swami Vivekan stayed. So this is Swami, this is the map of Gujarat. So Gujarat, the population is 60 million people, six, six crore. This is the whole of Gujarat. So this is Lal Shankar Vimasankar Travadi. The sub-judge of Lal Shankar Vimasankar Travadi was a sub-judge of Ahmedabad at, at that time. And this is the building. Now it has become dilapidated, but still it is existing. And we are trying to get it to convert into a memorial. We have requested the government of Gujarat to help us in that. And this is the second bungalow near the, just behind the town hall, near the river. Uh, this, here also he stayed, the house of Lal Shri Guru Travadi, near Alice Bridge. Now it is in the, that time it was forest, now it is in the center. Then from Ahmedabad, Swamiji went to Advarvan and he had darshan of Ranak Devi. And from there he walked all the way to Limdi. Now, he reached in the, in the evening. In the evening, Swamiji reached Limli and he was very much exhausted. So he, there he saw a temple. He said, he asked the pujari, the priest, is there any facility of staying? He said, no, there is no facility here in this temple. But nearby, there is some monastery. There you can stay, perhaps they may allow. So he went to the nearby monastery and they were monks. Now, Swamiji did not know what type of monks they were. They were not monks. They were tantric sadhus. And they were practicing very different type of practices. So, Swamiji had no idea. So, he stayed there overnight. Then the head monk, he said, so much power you have got. Because, and that has come because you have observed purity. So, we will break your brahmacharya and got psychic powers. So Swamiji did not want, so he wanted to go away. Then he found he has been imprisoned. This is the place where he was imprisoned. So we have found out the place where he was imprisoned. Then Swamiji is in, in a wax, what to do? And then he went on praying to Sri Ramakrishna, went on praying to the Divine Mother. Then after long prayers, he got one solution. One boy used to come to bring milk for him, small boy. He got, friend, he, did, he got friendship with him. And then he told, can you help me? And that boy was very much impressed with Swamiji's number. He says, yes, I'll help. I'm giving you one message. You take this message to the king, Maharaja of Limdi. I heard that he is very kind-hearted. He will help me. And so there was nothing to write. He took a piece of charcoal. And there was an earthen jar, broken earthen jar. He took a part of it and draw, wrote down, Sadhu bhai mein hai, the monk in his danger. And he said, you take it, but nobody should come to know that you are taking it. So he hid it behind his chadar and ran to the Maharaja. Now, these watchmen, they were not allowing that boy. He's a small boy, but I want to meet Maharaja. <laughs> you have to meet Maharaja. No. And he was, no, 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 I have to meet Maharaja. Maharaja at that time was walking. He was a kind-hearted man. He said, what is the matter? He said, he wants to meet you. Okay, let him come. Then he brought out that message that one monk has come. Oh, he's looking like Shiva. And uh, he is the message. Then he immediately sent all the police, his, all his uh, attendants, uh, all his uh, people, the sipais, And Swamiji was uh, made free. And Maharaja was very angry. All such types of people are staying in my kingdom. He took action and just put them out of the city, out of the kingdom. So that was the, that was Limdi. 
maybe two, three days. We, have, we do not know, but it may not be very big, long gap. Within two, three days, he got his cap. So now, so Limdi Maharaja, Yashwan Singh Ji, he told Swamiji, now you should be very careful in where you are staying, and you stay with me. He was a very spiritual, highly spiritual man. So this is the bungalow you are saying, this is called Tower Bungalow. Now that palace got burnt in 1909. Only some portion remained. Fortunately, the portion in which Swami Vivekananda had stayed remained. So that portion, bungalow, that palace, was handed over to us by the descendants of Maharaja Yeswan Singh Ji. So there is a memorial there in Limdi, worth seeing. And on the right-hand side, you see the old palace from inside. That is the Darbar Hall, so much decorated. This is the old uh, on the right hand side, you see the old scene, old photograph of inside of the palace. And this, is, this palace is still existing as it is, looks like that only. Now it is under Ramakrishna mission and we are taking care of it. And there is a story how we got this bungalow, this palace, how did we get it? There is an interesting story. If time permits, I will later on share with you. So this is Maharaja Thakur Sahib Yaswan Singh Ji of Limdi. Sri Yaswan Singh Ji. And he came in intimate contact with Swamiji and he took all possible care of him. Then he wrote letters of introduction to various kings and divans. He said, now don't stay like this, unknown places. <clears throat> and right hand side is the Jag Jagannath Tirtha. He was the Shankracharya of, of Puri later on. At that time, he was just a priest. And he had a lot of conversation with Swamiji there in Limdi. <clears throat> so this is Sri Chabildas Shah of Limdi. He was a merchant of Limdi. And on the right hand side is Rajmata Sri Pravind Kuvarba. It is Pravind Kuvarba who handed over that palace to a private center called Ramakrishna Prartha Mandir who then 1994 handed over to Ramakrishna Mission for converting to memorial. There is an interesting story about Chavil Bhai Shah and about Rajmata. I'll come to you later on. From there, he went to Bhavnagar. This is the place, this is the house of a musician, let uh, Magan Bhai of Andharya. And he was a state musician. So Swamiji stayed with him for two, three days. This is the house in which he stayed. And right hand side is the Maharaja of Bhavnagar, see Takht Singh Ji. And Takht Singh Ji was very much impressed by Swamiji. And so he also had a lot of conversation with Bhavnagar Maharaja, who later on became very progressive minded. From there, he went to Junagar. Junagar, he was the guest of Sri Haridas Viharide Desai, Divan of Junagar. You know, Swami Vivekan wrote 13 letters. He was so close to Divanji of Junagar. And Divanji of Junagar took all possible care of him. So Swamiji has written 13 very, very inspiring letters. You find that in the complete works of Swami Vivekananda. On the right hand side is a Changalal Pandya. He was working in the office of Divanji, that is Haridas Vihar Des Desai. And in this, during the second visit of Junagar, Swamiji stayed with Chagallal Pandya because by that time, uh, Haridas Desai had taken, taken temporary retirement. Again, he had to join the service. That's a long story. But Chagallal Pandya also came in intimate contact with Swamiji and he had a lot of conversation with Swamiji, which is all recorded and available in the life of Swami Vivekananda by his Eastern Western disciples. And from there, I have taken in my book, Vivekan in Gujarat, and we have brought out a souvenir also in which this whole article is there. And I'll be sending a few copies to Ishatmananji, uh, some books and some souvenirs, where all the whole article giving all the details about Chagallal Pandya. He wrote the memories of Swami Vivekan when he was staying with him and all that will be shared. So at Junagar, these are the places Swamiji visited. Below is the Ashoka inscription that is still available. When you go to Junagar, you must see it. Then there is the Girnar for Girnar. Girnar is the mountain which is considered to be 
more ancient than Himalayas. And even as in today, there are pilgrim centers on this Girnar. 10,000 steps are there. And Swamiji practiced austerities on this Mount Girnar. And you know about Pavari Baba. Pavari Baba had also practiced. And many, many monks had practiced earlier. So there are Jain Tirthankars also practice austerities. Hindu temples are there. Likewise, there are so many Buddhist temples, Buddhist stupas, Buddhist uh, uh, caves are also there. So this is an ancient place. Girnar is considered very uh, important pilgrim center. And now there is a ropeway also, at least half of the distance you can go. Previously, 10,000 steps you have to go. Now up to 5,000 steps, there is a Ambaji temple and there you can go by the ropeway. And upstairs in the upper court, that is the the wall of the old fort, that also plays. And left hand side, the top one, is Damodar Kund. Damodar Kund is the place where Narsi Mehta, you must have heard, 15th century poet. He was a great devotee of Lord Sri Krishna. And there are many, many bhajans. You might have, you might have heard the bhajan, Vaishnav Janato Tenere Kahiye, Je Peed Parai Jane Re, Par Dukhe Upkar Kare Toye, that was a favorite song of Gandhiji and whenever he will start the prayer meeting, he will start with this prayer. This was written by Narsi Mehta and this is the pond where Narsi Mehta used to take bath. There is a temple of Sri Krishna there also there. That Muchkund cave also is there. It's a historic place. Whole Junagar. Juna means old. It is an old city containing a lot of historic things. There are Buddhist caves and so many other historical, this one. Now here he came in touch with Sri Mansukram Tripathi, who was an agent of British government, uh, staying in Junagar and uh, closely connected with uh, Haridas Desai also. And then right hand side is the Govardhanam Tripathi. He was the nephew of Mansukram Tripathi. And Gover Govardhan Ram Tripathi, is, uh, his name everybody knows in Gujarat, very great a novelist. He wrote the novel Saraswati Chandra on which the film was made also. So that is the Govardhan Tripathi and Govardhan Tripathi and Mansukram Tripathi. They both came in intimate contact with Swami. At least Mansukram Tripathi came in contact with Swamiji and Swami Abhedaranaji writes in his autobiography that I was searching for Swami Vivekananda and finally got him and he was staying with Mansukram Tripathi in Junagar. Then later on in Bombay also, he stayed as the guest of Mansukram Tripathi. He himself was a great writer. And his nephew, Sri Govardhan Ram Tripathi, was still more popular writer. This is Haridas Desai, was also a member of the Opium Commission. At that time, the British government had made an Opium Commission, and all were more or less American, this British people, but then the Nawab was there, and Haridas Desai is right hand side left, right corner, that is Haridas Desai. He was also a member of the Opium Commission. Ah, this is very important. <laughs> so when Swamiji was traveling from Junagar to Porbandar, in between there is a station, railway station called Jetasar. So whole night he has to spend. So he was sitting on a bench. And the assistant station master was Hargovindas Ajramar Pandya. He is the person. Hargovindas Ajramar Pandya, who was also called Motabhai, because Nana Bhai started Dakshinamurti and he was Motabhai, Motabhai, his elder brother. So, this Hargovindas Ajramar Pandya, he was very kind hearted and he was given the title Mahatma because he used to serve the monks and he was very much kind hearted and he did a lot of educational work and all that. He was a very philanthropic man. So he saw a monk, very promising, uh, young, at that time only 27 years. So he said, where are you going? He said, I am going to Porbandar. So whole night he has to spend. He said, why don't you spend in my house? Why do you stay? He took him his house. And then a lot of work, a lot of uh, talking. Then it is Hargovindas Adramar Pandya, who for the, from, from whom Swami Vivekan for the first time heard about the world parliament religious that was going to be held in Chicago. So there is a connection between Chicago and Gujarat, Chicago and Jetalsar. Jetalsar is the railway station where he first time 
came to know that it's going to be worse parliamentary divisions in Chicago. But this was information only. He has not yet decided. That came later on. But you know how the whole things are coming up. Limdi Maharaja told you should go to the West. You are so learned. You know such beautiful English and Sanskrit and all that. Yeswant Singh himself was knowing. He had gone thrice to twice to America, twice to England, and once to America. He was himself very highly pro educated person. He suggested Swamiji, you must go to the West. He was the first king to suggest Swamiji to go to the West. But not he also did not know about the Parliament. But this was in 1891, and the Parliament happened in 93. So in the beginning of the period, Hargovindas Ajramar Pandya was the assistant master. He was almost like you know ready recorder. He knew so much information. He used to give that information, and. All the newspapers would come to the assistant session master. He will distribute to the other people. So Gujarati newspaper might have given some item. Kathiawar News, uh, Kathiawar Times. I tried to see the Kathiawar Times, but I did not get that particular paper in which this night news item would have come. I wanted to know, but that particular press has been closed. Lock, um, old records are not available, eaten away by the worms. Still, we are trying to get some document evidence, but there are two, three document evidences. From where we come to know that it is he who, for the first time, told about the World Parliament Religious Chicago. So this is uh, Moti by Motilal Lalchan Divanji of Bhuj. So Swamiji took an introduction letter from Haridas Desai, and this Divanji of Bhuj was a bosom friend of Haridas Desai. So he is the Divan of Bhuj in Kutch, and. He is the Diwan of Junagars. Both were friends right from the childhood. So he wrote a letter of introduction. He went to Bhuj. Then Bhuj took him to the Maharaja of Bhuj, Kach, Maharao of Kach, that is Khengarji III. And he was very much impressed by the personality of Swami Vivekananda. So this is when he was passing, he was going from Junagar to Kach. He passed through a desert. This is the desert. Now, Swami Vivekan writes uh, in his book, Gyan Yoga, you might have found, that once when I was going through a desert, I see a lot of water. And I said, oh, people call it a, that is a, it is a place where water is not available. Everywhere there's so much of water. Foolish people, they say. Likewise, he's going every day and thinking, oh, there is water. Then one day he was trying to take the water, this water is not there. Then he came to know what is marriage. Then Swamiji said, this is what is the world, world is whole about. World is like a marriage. And so we think the world is real. But ultimately, if you try, then you will come to know it is not there. So he gave that example of the marriage, which he himself had experienced in Gujarat. This, in this desert of Kutch, when he was passing, was, and he was walking all the way. Walking all the way from Junagar to this place. Bhuj in Kutch. This is from Bhuj. If you go, there is another five hours drive, will take you to Narayan Sarovar, very ancient place. In the Bhagavata, also, you will find there is a mention of Narayan Sarovar. So, this is a very ancient place. So, Swamiji went to see the Narayan Sarovar. So he wanted to see the Koteshwar Mahadev temple also, naturally. And uh, then he came to Somnath. He came back to Junagar. And from Junagar, he went again to Somnath temple. This is the old temple. Now beautiful new temple has come, big corridor has come. And that came only after 1950, when Sardar Vallabhai Patel's dream was fulfilled by Kanayal al Munshi and others, and many people. Now there is a trust. Naren Modi is the chairman of the trust. And they have done a lot of, it's a very big complex Somnath temple. And Swami Vekan says in his lectures from Kolomo Tolomar, you will find he says, it, if you see the temples like Somnath, you'll come to know that the life force of Indian people is religion. Because this Somnath temple was destroyed many times by the invaders, and again it was rebuilt. Now again it has been rebuilt in all its glory. So this is the new temple near the ocean. Beautiful Somnath temple has come up. This is the inside of the Linga. And this is Bhalka Tirtha. Bhalka Tirtha is near Somnath temple. 
This is the place where Swami Vivekananda gave up his body. At the age of 125 years, Sri Krishna, he went to his own abode and one hunter, thinking to be a deer, shot the arrow and that arrow went into the feet and he was so much sorry. Sri Krishna said, don't worry, I myself wanted, now it's my time, I have done everything. The new religion has been established for which I had come and this, our, uh, all the people, those who were evil minded have been sent to their award abode and so now it's time for me to depart. And there near Somnath you will get Bhalka Tirtha where he got the arrow and there is another place called Prabhas Tirtha where Triveni is there and people go there for all rituals, particularly if dead people are there, ashes will be there. Plus there is a place Dehot Sarga. He walked all the way from this Bhalka Tirtha about five miles, went to the place near the river and there he finally left his body. There the body was cremated, that is called Dehot Sarga. In Prabhas Tirtha, Prabhas Tirtha is a very famous Tirtha, even you get the mention in Bhagavata. So that is Prabhas Tirtha, just within the vicinity of five miles you will get all these things. In Somnath temple if you go, you must reserve some time for this also. From Somnath, Swamiji went to Porbandar. So Shankar Pandurang Pandit was the administrator of Porbandar at that time. And uh, why administration? Because Maharaja was Vikmaji, but he was removed by the British government under pretext of something. And so they sent an administrator and he was a great Sanskrit scholarship. And Swami Vivekananda told Swami Akhandananji, today is the birthday of Swami Akhandananji. Actually in India, they celebrated yesterday. He told Akhandananji, I have so met so many scholars, nowhere I have seen a scholar equal to the scholarship of Shankar Pandurang Pandit. He knew many languages. And then he, he was translating Atharveda. So he took the help of Swamiji when he saw, Swamiji, you are so much talented, you ought to go to the West. Nobody will understand your genius here. You ought to go to the West. And when you go to the West, you will need to know French. I will teach you French. So Swamiji learned French here, wrote a letter to his brother disciples. Brother disciples could not make out who has written this letter in French. Finally, they went to a principal who knew French. Then they came to know it is their own beloved brother Naren. He has written a book, written a letter in French. So Swamiji learned French in, uh, in Porbandar. He studied the Patanjali's sutras of Panini there. He helped Shankar Pandit Pandit in translating Vedas. And he went more than two times to Porbandar. Mahapurusha Maharaj tell during his conversation, said, do you know why he went to Porbandar twice? Because he fell in love with the library. And Shankar Pandu Pandit had a very huge library. So whatever thought bombs that he threw in the world's parliament region in Chicago, that whole bombs were prepared in Porbandar. That means he, under, he, uh, he collected all this knowledge of scriptures. So many books were available. He was fully equipped with all the gunpowder, with all the knowledge because of the great library and because he had learned French there in Porbandar. So Porbandar he spent, in the old books you will find that he spent 11 months, but that is not possible because the whole period itself is maximum eight months. So we think that it is four months. His daughter Pandita Kshama Rao, we'll see her photograph. She has written a book, Shankar Jeevan Akhyanam. There she says, Swamiji stayed with us for about four months in this Bhojeshwar bungalow. And nearby is the Sudama temple. You know the story of Sudama. So Porbandar was Sudama Puri earlier. So from Sudama, Sudama went from this Porbandar to Dwarka. It is about three hours drive. He must have taken a long time for him to walk. And this is about Porbandar. This type of horse carriage are depicted in the paintings and the wall of the palace. This type of the horse carriage, it is on this type of Victorian type of horse carriage that Swamiji was, he saw so many places in and around Porbandar. And the person who took him there, his grandson, he gave me a diary in which his father has written that Swami Sachidananda had come 
they had Vivekan is not written, but the description meets and he was taken by him. So many new things have come up because of the diary. This is Pandita Kshama Rao. Kshama Rao, daughter of Shankar Pandung Pandit, who wrote the book Shankar Jivan Akhyanam. And uh, it is in that book that you get that Swamiji spent four months there. Nearby is the Usha Devi. She was the wife of Shankar Pandung Pandit, who uh, used to feed Swamiji. And Swamiji taught her many things. Swamiji was a good cook. So he taught her many things. And Usha Devi was very happy. that such a monk is there who knows so much of cooking. <laughs> This is the Bhojeshwar bungalow. Right hand side is the old bungalow. Then we have renovated. This is also the old bungalow. But both two views are there. But we have renovated it now at a, at a very lost, uh, quite a good expenditure. And this bungalow, Bhojeshwar bungalow, is the bungalow where Swami Vivekan stayed. This very bungalow was handed over by the government of Gujarat to Ramakrishna Mission for converting into a befitting memorial of Swami Vivekananda on 12 January, 9, 12 January 1997, birthday of Swami Vivekananda. So now it's a memorial. It's a branch center of Ramakrishna Mission now, official branch center. On the left hand side is the Reva Shankar Anupram Dave, who went on to live for 106 years. So when he was 98 years, in 1975, Swami Atma Sananji from Gujarat, he was the president of Rajkot Ashrama, he went to Porbandar, he met him, he showed him the exact room in that Bhojeshwar bungalow where Swami Vivekan stayed for four months. And he said, we used to go to Swami Vivekan every day morning and we had to recite Vedas. So all the four Vedas, we four, brother, we four students of Sanskrit school used to go to him and read out all the four Vedas he used to listen every day morning. All these details have been given by Revashank Anupram Dave to Swami Atma Sananji. And so in 1975 itself, in that bungalow, in that room, very big portrait of Swami Vivekan was placed by Swami Atma Sananji, and a marble plaque was placed that here in this bungalow, Swamiji stayed. This is Maharana Vikmaji. He was the king of Porbandar. He instantly, he had a liking for Swami Vivekan. First of all, he, he was a great uh, lover of music. Swamiji knew music also. And he came in contact with Swamiji, and so Swamiji had to stay with him in the palace also for about 21 days. So this is Dwarka, this temple. The Swamiji went for a pilgrimage to Dwarka, and right hand side is the Sarada Mat. Actually, it should be Sarada Pit. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. Sarada Pit is the, you know, there are four pithas of Shankaracharya. So in the western side is a Sarada Pit in Dwarka. It is only one wall. There is no. It's a part of Dwarkadish temple only now. If you go to Dwarkadish temple, you go via this Sarda pit, Shankaracharya Mat. And that time, he, Swamiji stayed in this very house. That house has been now destroyed. New big guest house has come up, but that old house is gone. But I had the photograph of the house in which, or probable room in which Swami Vivekan would have stayed in Dwarka. All the details are given in the book. This is only few details I'm giving here. And this is uh, Trivedi, this is uh, Manilal Nabhubhai Trivedi. Manilal Nabhubhai Divedi, he is a big poet, very famous uh, writer in Gujarati. He met Swamiji in Nadiyad. Nadiyad is the place where Haridas Vyardesai used to stay. That is the place. Though he was Divan of Junagar, Nadiyad is about, say, uh, two hours' drive. One hour drive from Ahmedabad and two hour, uh, one hour drive from Baroda. Between Baroda and Ahmedabad is Nadiyad. That is the room in which Swamiji stayed. And there is a big house still existing, containing 200 rooms. The biggest house in the country. That is the house in, that belonged to Haridas Vihar Desai. And there when he went to Nadiyad for three days at the request of Haridas Desai, this Mansukram Dvedi, say Manibhai Nahubhai Dvedi, the great writer, he met him there. And even Swamiji, Manubhai Nabibhai Dvedi also writes about Swami Vivekanand and they discussed about Vedanta. And he was to go to Chicago, but he could not go, but his papers were read out in the World Parliament Religions. And this is the building. Just see, a huge building, palatial building. 
now it has become old now there are so many uh, descendants hundreds of descendants somebody has got one room some another guys have got two rooms like that now it has been broken so this is from nadiyat swami ji came by train to baroda this is the baroda right hand side is the dilaram bungalow the historic dilaram bungalow where swami vivekananda stayed as the guest of the den diwan manibhai jasbai now manibhai jasbai was again a bosom friend of haridas desai so he made him stay with him in this very bungalow this is the bungalow in which he himself used to stay so swami ji was his guest and this is the lakshmi vilas palace visited by swami ji there were paintings of ravi orma and right hand side is the maharaja sayaji rao gayakwad of baroda but we do not get any documentary evidence where swami ji stayed where swami ji met with maharaja gayakwad we don't have any documentary evidence but one thing is that that in when last it, before going to kanyakumari when he was in trivandrum prince martand varma asked him you have seen so many princes what is your opinion about that then swami ji told of all the princes i have met in the whole of india the one who impressed me most with his patriotism with his dynamism with his far sightedness was maharaja sayaji rao gayakwad of baroda so he must have met him maybe in poor maybe in mahabaleshwar because when swami ji wrote a letter to haridas devasta desai that you a friend mani bhai jashbai to call possible care of me that is a letter address it dated 26 of uh 26th of um april 1892 so that was the that is the document that we have got where in the letter addressed to haridas desai swami ji writes in his own handwriting that you are friend mani bhai jashbai to call possible care of me and today and i have seen ravi varma's paintings and today i am leaving for bombay so that is how the gujarat tour ended this is ravi varma very famous man and his paintings were shown during the columbian exposition in chicago here in 1893 he was so famous. right hand side is most important that is the original letter in his handwriting of swami vivekanand so there he says your brothers took all possible care of me they received me at nadiyat station and then from there i came to baroda and you a friend mali bhai jashbai took all possible care of me and we have met twice once when we discussed about the education system of baroda and another thing for some other reason that is we two meetings and ps he writes today i am living for bombay and i have seen the ravi varma painting also now you see the signature it is not vivekananda vivekananda that means he has recently adopted vivekananda name at the request of maharaj of khetri maybe khetri maharaj met him in 1891 from there he had come here this was 1892 so from september 1891 to april 1892 that is the whole period of swami ji in gujarat so thank you very much that is the presentation now time is very less but very interesting story before you have if some time for question answers a very interesting story about limdi limdi what happened that i had shown you chabilal met chabil bhai shah he was a cotton merchant he, he, not a cotton merchant he was he was a he was a businessman and he had lot of cotton mills and all that in limdi and limdi is the place where lot of cotton is grown he earlier was in rangoon but he was not keeping good health so he came back to india he was in calcutta also for some time limdi is the prop is the original place where he used to stay so he came back to limdi he was staying but his wife was very much sick and she was almost on the death bed one day she said oh i am feeling so nice today what happened last night one person with beard he came to me and he blessed me and from that time i am feeling so nice and i am feeling well but who is that person i don't know but from that time i am feeling well. so they were thinking who might be the person now there is a magazine called akhand anand very famous magazine so one day what happened that chabil bhai was reading that book in between he had to go for some work so he kept that book in some place just near and nearby was 
his wife, oh, Ajwadi Ba, his name of Ajwadi Ba, that is the wife of Shabil Bhai. So he just, she just took up the book and she was great. And there she found photograph of Sri Ramakrishna. Oh, this is the person who came to my dream and who has saved me. Now find out where is that person. So Ramakrishna, he is the person. We have to find out Ramakrishna. How to find out? So they sent a message to Bombay. Their relatives were in Bombay. Find out where is Ramakrishna. At great length, they, they found Ramakrishna Mutt in Mumbai. So went to Ramakrishna Mutt, Mumbai. They said, where is Ramakrishna? Oh, he, he passed away long back. This is Ramakrishna Mutt in his name. But we want Ramakrishna because he has saved. He is gone. But from where you are coming? From My God, you go to Rajkot, which is very limited. Just only two hours drive is the Rajkot. And you are coming all the way to Bombay, 1,000 kilometers. There is only 100 kilometers, 100 miles. Not 100 miles, even 100 kilometers less than one. So then Chabil Bhai came to Rajkot. That time Swami Atmasthananji, he was the president of that, head of the Rajkot Center. Then he told the whole story. He said, you are so fortunate to get the vision of Sri Ramakrishna. You are fortunate. Then he gave him some books and all that, and he became a devotee, Shabil Bhai. And then he took Diksha, initiation from Swami Vireshwaranaji, 10th president of Ramakrishna order. Now, his wife says, I also want initiation, but she is bedridden. She cannot move out. Somehow she has been saved. So next time when Vireshwaranaji came, then uh, his wife said, I want initiation, but I can't go. You, so Chabil Bhai telephoned Atmastanji, uh, can your president not come to my house and give Diksha initiation to my wife? And Atmastanji, you know his nature, very powerful. And he shouted, you what? You fool? What do you think of the president of Ramakrishna Mission? He will come to your house and give Diksha. He has no other job. Huh? Here hundreds are waiting for him for Darshan. He will go, no, no, no. But he is not living. No, no, my wife is weeping. Please do something. She cannot come. Then finally, he telephoned Virashwanji that this is what has happened. He said, I will go. I'll go. So Virashwanji came to Rajkot. From there, he went to Limdi. He gave initiation to Chabil Bhai's wife. Now, both became ardent devotees of Ramakrishna. Now, Swami Atma said, hey, you start an ashrama there in Limdi, private center. So they started a private center, study circle. They started reading Kathamrita, gospel, every week. So in his house, they started 8, 10, 15. People are increasing. So they rented a room. That house is becoming less, 30, 40. So somebody jokingly say, hey, why don't you go to Rajmata, Prevent Kovarba? Tell her to give the palace. She's lying uh, idle. Not, no, nothing is happening there. Because that palace was burned. Only one portion is there. They have shifted to another palace. It is lying idle. Why don't you tell? Jokingly, they said, you take the palace itself. But, said, no, no, no. He could not dare to ask palace for a study circle. But night, night, he, three, thrice he heard in English, go and ask for it. Go and ask for it. Go and ask for it. From where, who is speaking, he doesn't know. So next day morning, he took the interview with Rajmata Pravind Korba, and he said, that if you can give the palace every week, allow us to do our study circle because a lot of people are coming now. Then Rajmata Smith said, I know about your study circle. I'm keeping all the track. In fact, I was to come ignored, incognito to <laughs> attend to your study circle because I am a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna. Huh? You are a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna. How? Then she said that many years back, she had gone to Mount Abu, her guru's place. And when she was there, she found a photograph of Sri Ramakrishna. Who is he? Why? You don't know him. He is the guru of Swami Vivekananda. Why are you asking? Oh, he comes to me and gives me vision every day. Huh? In dream? No, no, no. I'm awake and I'm sleeping. And on the wall, he appears. He doesn't talk to me. But he appears and goes. This is every day he's giving vision. You are getting vision of Sri Ramakrishna, he will not give. 
Something he wants to get work done from you. That's why he's giving vision. His guru had told many years back. Now today I come to know you want my palace. That is why Sri Ramakrishna is doing all this. So he says, I want to give the palace, but I must ask my son. So let him come. He has gone to Delhi. Then Chhatrasalji, his son came. Then he saw mother is so much uh, inclined to give them. So he said, why you only study? You take the whole palace. And the whole palace was handed over to Ramakrishna Prartha Mandir. That was a private center. And Chabil Bhai was running. In fact, his name became Ramakrishna Wala. And his, his name was also, his, his mill, his, he had a cotton mill. The name of that cotton mill also changed to Ramakrishna Wala Mill. <laughs> he was full of Ramakrishna. In the name of Ramakrishna, he will start dancing. He's so much devoted. So it is all that play has gone. In Gujarat, there are so many stories inside how this, all these things have come up. And now there are, in 1927, Rajkot Center was started. 1994, this palace that you are seeing in Limdi was handed over by the descendants of Rajmata, by Rajmata herself to, previously to Prarthana Mandir. But then it was that, Prarth, that private Prarthana Mandir that Ramakrishna Prarthana Mandir, private center, handed over to Ramakrishna Mission in 1994. Limdi was started. 1997, 12 January, the historic Bhojeshwar Bangalore where Swami Vivekan stayed in Porbandar as the guest of the Shankar Pandu Pandit and Maharaja of Porbandar in the palace. So that Hobajeshwar Bangalow was handed over by the government of Gujarat to Ramakrishna Mission for converting to befitting memorial of Swami Vivekananda. So that was 1997. Then in 2005, on 18 April 2005, Ram Nomi Day, the historic Dilaram Bangalow in which Swami Vivekananda stayed as the guest of uh, Mani Bhai Jashbhai, who was the Diwan of Baroda at that time. So that bungalow was handed over the government of Gujarat. So another, memo another memorial came up, Ramakrishna Mission Vivekan Memorial Baroda. And then in 2018, the private center of Ahmedabad handed over to Ramakrishna Mission Mutt. And so another center was started in Ahmedabad in 2018. And 2022, the private center that was in Bhuj handed over the position bungalow, handed over the whole center to Ramakrishna Mutt. So another center, sixth center came up in Bhuj. 1927, first center, till 1994, only Rajkot was there. And from Rajkot has given two presidents of Ramakrishna Mission. 1945 to 1966, Swami Bhuteshananji was there, who later on became the 12th president of the Ramakrishna Mission. And 1966 to 1975, Swami Atmastanji was the, pres was the president of Rajkot. Later on, he became the president of the whole order. He, was, he became the 15th president of the Ramakrishna order. So Rajkot has got a special place. So all of you are welcome to Rajkot. We will arrange your Gujarat trip. We arranged for monks recently. From 1st to 9th February, we told all the monks, we organized the Gujarat Tirth Yatra. And 116 monks from various parts of India and also from other countries, they all joined the Tirth Yatra from 1st to 9th of February. And uh, that was a wonderful thing. We have brought out a souvenir. I will send a few copies to Chicago. You can read that. In that, you will get all the details. And the feedback given by the monks, they, they said, we have never experienced such things in past, and we don't know whether in the future we'll get such beautiful way. 25 cars and two buses going around Gujarat with the flag of Ramakrishna Mission all over Gujarat. And we went to all the places, all the places. First, they came to Ahmedabad, from Ahmedabad to Baroda, Baroda to Statue of Unity, the highest statue of the world, three times the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> three times the height of the Statue of Liberty. That is the Statue of Unity, Sardar Labai Patel's statue. Then from there to Baroda, on to Limli, on to Rajkot, on to Junagar, on to Somnath, on to Dwarka, back to Rajkot, and then they left for their own places. We had made all arrangements. It was wonderful. They all enjoyed Gujarat Tirth Yatra. So now you have taken a virtual tour. If you want actual tour, you have to come there. <laughs> and all of you are welcome. But minimum, uh, one, one week will be there. One week is minimum required. Ten days is better. But if you want to include Kutch, which we could not include in Gujarat Tirth Yatra, then you require 15 days. Anyway, 
If you have only three days, then come to Rajkut only. <laughs> Whatever it is, you are all welcome. I'm so happy that I could take you to the tour of Gujarat, virtual tour of Gujarat. And um, so many stories are there in that souvenir also we have brought out. Uh, just recently, that souvenir was released. Swami Gautamaji had come as the vice president of our Ramakrishna order. He came on 25th. I was with him throughout. And only on 3rd, he left Rajkot and I left on 4th for America. Next day I left. So uh, that uh, Gautamanji Maharaj release on 29th, commemorative souvenir on the occasion of 125th anniversary of Ramakrishna Mission with the title Ramakrishna Mission in Gujarat, giving all the details of the activities of various centers, 11 non-affiliated centers and six affiliated centers. And the seventh one will be affiliated very soon, that is in Adipur. So now we will have seven centers of Ramakrishna Mission. That is the, how the whole graph is going up. And so they, that, that whole thing is there. And the special focus of that souvenir is Gujarat Tirthi Yatra. All the photographs we have given. So that souvenir, I will send few copies here and uh, you will be able to go through it. And uh, I came uh, to America on 5th, I arrived. From there I went to, I was in Pennsylvania, went to St. Louis, there were two lectures on 8th and 10th. And uh, day before yesterday, uh, I arrived in Chicago and uh, today I had a, the main speech was there in Dexterity Global. Uh, there was a global conference that attended in the morning and tomorrow also we have two lectures in Chicago and then 16th there is a lecture in, uh, tomorrow also there are two lectures, morning Ashatman and Ishatman ji has organized two lectures. Morning is the banquet, huh? fall banquet and also evening in the church, Unitarian church. And then 15th, uh, 16th morning, I'll start for my onward journey. 16th evening in Bloomington, 17th evening in Indianapolis, 18th evening in Cincinnati, and 19th, I'll reach Washington, D.C. 20th, there is a lecture in Washington, D.C. 21st, I go to New York. 22nd, there are two lectures morning in the Vedanta Society. Swami Sarupriyananda will be coming here. There, I will go to his place and he will be doing Durga Puja, Ashtami Day, and after that I will talk on leaving Durga. And then evening again another lecture in uh, Jamaica with Prakash Chakravarti's place. And 23rd is Vivekan Vidyapish in New Jersey, 24th another lecture in New Jersey. And then 25th I go to Boston side, 27th is Babson College, 28th is the Providence lecture and 28th I come back 29th morning Long Island near New York the lecture two lectures one for the children kids and one for the parents effective parenting and 30th morning I fly back to India so I have given Gujarat tour of <laughs> Gujarat tour of Swamiji and America tour <laughs> my America tour also glimpse I'm very happy to meet you all and uh, all of you are welcome to Gujarat. Thank you very much. I think four minutes are left, if any question. Four minutes are left. All the details you will get, most of the details, many details you will get in the life of Swami Vikan, the Eastern Western disciples, but many new researches that I have gone done, We'll get in the souvenir and in the book Vivekan Gujarat. I will send copies to Maharaj Swamiji, Ishat Manaji. Yes, anybody? Swamiji uh, used to wear pagadi. That was not from Bengal. Did he pick it up in Gujarat? No, no, no. Many people that thought that he picked up the pagdi in Khetri because that is a hot place and many people they put the pagdi and you will find Maharaja Khetri also. And in fact, he donated that way. When Swamiji was living for America, he told Jagmohan Lal to, go to take him to up to Bombay and Jagmohan Lal took uh, all the, prepared all the clothes and he prepared the, why he is wearing pagdi in Chicago is because that was given by Khetri Maharaja. And that particular cloth, that dress also was prepared by 
खेतरी महाराजा जगमोहन लाल जी मुंशी जगमोहन बाबू इज अ दीवान ही प्रिपेयर बट यू नो दैट इज अ वेरी ड्राई प्लेस राजस्थान इज वेरी ड्राई प्लेस वेरी हॉट सो द क्लोज वे आर शूटिंग टू ए हॉट क्लाइमेट स्वामी जी डिड नॉट नो दैट टेम्परेचर विल बी माइनस हियर सो ही हेड नो क्लॉज ही सफर्ड वेरी मच एंड ही हेड नो मनी ऑल्सो एट दैट टाइम ही सफर्ड वेरी मच एंड दैट इज वाई ही टूक शेल्टर अंडर ए बॉक्स कार एज यू लिसन एनी वे सो द टर्बन is a rajasthani turban gujarat also all the kings they used to wear turban or some or some sort of this one but you will find a photograph in baranagar there is swami ji wearing a turban so that particular notion that particular statement that swami ji learned to wear or he for the first time wore pagdi turban in rajasthan is ruled out because if you see a photograph in which varanagar they hardly have some clothes all the some from brother disciples of swami ji that photograph is available if you go to the biography you will get the photograph biography and pictures there you will find swami ji nobody else has got so many clothes <laughs> only small cloth swami ji has clothes and he has got a turban also so swami ji but he was not usually wearing the turban you find his la parivraja ka days poses like he is going at that time he is bald headed there is no turban but maybe that because khetri maharaja gave him that turban he wore this turban at least in the word parliament religions in chicago maybe that is the reason okay very nice the volunteer is very dynamic very active ha ah, very big very big volunteer yeah french yes he learned french at porbandar he learned french at porbandar and in the paris congress he spoke also in french yes that is the that is the doc, that is the uh, that is what the life says though he didn't know very perfect french but he gave one lecture in the paris congress uh, in 1990 during his second visit to the west yeah he learned french there i thought why swami ji is knowing such a good english why should why uh, that uh, shankar pandu pandit said that you ought to know french when you go to the west but when i came to europe in 2004 then when i went to france and other countries in europe nobody likes english there is a war between you england and other countries so they they don't like you if you speak english uh, you are below standard french is the language of the elite so then under i understood myself why shankar pandu pandit said no when you go to the west you will need to know french english of course is okay there but only english will not do if you go to the west particularly the east the europe side yeah yeah that is why he was standard but you were not at that time to suggest to amiji that you should learn german <laughs> and he should have met you amiji at that time then you could have suggested please learn french learn german okay acha thank you very much